What are some of the reasons you decided to serve with MAP? So since I was a little girl, I had quite a strong sense of calling that God had asked me to become a pilot and to work in aviation and to use those skills to spread the word of God and to do sort of humanitarian aid work and that can involve um, trying to provide the resources or the skills necessary for a people group to survive and to continue to thrive. Something like that. Oh, we want to keep going? Is there anything else that you want to say to that? Um, so when it came a point in my life that God was asking me to step into this after having worked in aviation and also worked in IT for a number of years, I started searching out mission organisations, or not just mission organisations, actually um, other humanitarian aid organisations that aren't Christian, and God led me into MAF being the only organisation that its values lined up with the things God was asking of me. Good. <laughs> okay, name one thing that you find tough. So one of the things I find toughest about living over here is personal freedom. So the things that I took for granted in New Zealand, like going for walks on my own or going for a run or going to the supermarket are suddenly very challenging here. So being young and white and female tends to... <laughs> so being young, single and female can attract a lot of unwanted attention, which you get in New Zealand as well, but it, on here it's here it's on another level and you can have your person touched and a lot of people call out to you, crowds t can gather around you if you're particularly new. Um, so what used to be simple, like going to the supermarket and picking up a few things, suddenly you're constantly watching who's around and where your bag is and who's coming up behind you. Um, and so those things suddenly become very challenging when you're on your own. So the people in the bush have somewhat limited exposure to the Western world. And so I find going into the bush, while there's a lot of curiosity that I'm a white woman, it's a lot safer and a lot more pleasant and the attention tends to be a lot more just cheerful, friendly faces coming to say hello. Whereas in town where they've got exposure to television and radio and, can I say, Western pornography, um, then particularly with the younger men, and I'm talking sort of 18 plus, they tend to have a lot more sinister thoughts and behaviours. And there's also a greater lawlessness in town where there's multiple tribe groups, whereas if I was in a community, there was the one tribe group, tribal group, and they would look after me being the pilot or a visitor. They would take it upon themselves to police the situation and to care for us, whereas in town, that same sense of community doesn't exist. So, And you can't trust the police to come. So you tend to take your personal security on your own. That's what you found tough. Yes. Have you finished with that one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Next one, what do you find awesome? What I find awesome. Since starting this journey, uh, every day I'm continually pushed outside of my comfort zone. And the more I'm pushed out of my comfort zone, the more I'm pushed into trusting God and seeing Him work continually in my life and in bigger, greater ways than I've ever seen Him work in New Zealand. You wanted an example. Which one did you want? Second one. This, which one was the second one? Going for a walk with a dog. Okay. So one example would be, I recently got a dog. She helps me walk alone. Um, she just gives me a little extra protection. And when I normally tend to take the same two, three routes every day. Uh, but this day, when I walked out of my gate, I felt very strong prompting to turn left instead of right and take a route that I've been told I wasn't allowed to walk by myself. So I did break the rules and walk by myself. <laughs> and 
whilst I was walking, a national woman came up to me and said, look, I was just talking with the mamas over there or the older woman and we just think you shouldn't be here on your own. And I was quite disappointed that I couldn't go for a walk. And she said, well, if I walk with you, you'll be safe. And so we decided to walk just 10 minutes up the road and then turn around and come back. But two, three hours later, after she'd shown me her house and her brother's house and all her gardens where her line is, and we'd sat in her garden and she had pineapple and she'd fed my dog cow cow and we shared a beautiful time of just chatting and talking about God and seeing where her church was um, and taking a slight risk. I'd seen God provide not only protection but new friendships and just an amazing way of, of developing relationships within the community. Good. Uh, okay, the last one. So um, this is a piece of cake now. Um, talk to those who are considering serving with MAF overseas. I can't remember what I said last time. Um, so the journey with MAF has so far been one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences. It's probably been some of the biggest lows and the biggest highs I've ever had. And I have to say the highs and seeing God fulfillment in my life and seeing how he's just moving continually has been so rewarding but if I didn't have God's call it it would probably be too hard so the advice would be to be really certain of your calling and and not just your calling but who you are in Christ and who he's called you to be and to have a really firm foundation in your identity because there are going to be things that you come across in the journey and you continue to come across that will be big and they will be tough and they will be enough to quit and go home or to never even get to the field in the first place. But if you're certain of, of who God has asked you to be and and his protection and guidance around you, then those things will just be little blockages and you'll soon be able to push through them um, and then you'll find huge kingdom rewards waiting on the other side of them.